Hi guys. So in this tutorial, I will show you how to set up a quantum mechanics simulation in SVFSI. So, um, so the problem that we're interested in in, in this uh, tutorial will be the active contraction of this idealized left ventricle. So human heart is actually an inherent multiphysics system. So its normal function requires synchronization of solid mechanics, fluid dynamics, and electrophysiology. So here solid mechanics plays a central role as it receives electrical signal and then starts to contract to push blood to sustain a whole body uh, circulation. So modeling cardiac mechanics is quite challenging because first of all, the heart undergoes large deformation during one cardiac cycle. Uh, also the constitutive, constitutive model of the heart muscle is usually highly nonlinear. So SVFSI provides all the tools as required to actually model such a problem. So as I said before, uh, we're gonna start with this idealized geometry in today's tutorial. Um, so it'll be a mixture of using Sylvester GUI and the command line tool. We're using the Sylvester GUI to generate the mesh file needed for the simulation and we're using the command line tool to actually run the simulation. So uh, first let's start with Sylvester. So you can create a SP project, a new SP project. Uh, let me just call it LV contraction. So since we're using an idealized geometry, we can just directly import the solid model right here, I have it right here. So Sylvester accepts either VTP or STL files as a solid model and call it LV. And we do want to extract the face information from the model. All right, so if the model is not centered at uh, in the field of view, you can right click on the name and uh, select this, then you will see it here. So we need to uh, assign proper names to all the faces. So we double click right here. So if you click here and the corresponding face will highlight so that you can know where exactly is in the geometry. So this is a P surface. We give it a type of wall. So this is base. It's also of type wall. So this is end of surface. It's also of type wall. So with this geometry, we can create a, the mesh. Uh, we can right click on the mesh and create a mesh object, except all the default settings. So double click on the object name, mesh object name, it will open this configuration dialog. Um, so the most important parameter right here is this global max edge size. So it will control how fine your mesh will be. The smaller the number, the finer the mesh. Um, you can estimate, it, but you, you always need to adjust it. Let me put a 1.25 right here and run the measure. All right, so it will generate a mesh contains 5,612 nodes. Uh, we can uncheck this model so that I can have a better view of this mesh. This is a decent mesh, um, but it'll take quite a while to run just for like demonstration. So actually in this tutorial, I just put a very large number here to generate a quite coarse mesh. All right. So it'll generate a match with 472 nodes now. So now you need to save your project. Um, so the mesh file so far is not compatible with uh, SVFSI. To generate a like SVFSI a compatible match, you need an extra step. So right click on the mesh object, choose export mesh complete. So I'll export it to this live demo uh, folder. So if we go to that folder, now you will see a subfolder called LV Mesh Complete. So if we enter it, you will see a VTU file. So this VTU file contains all the water mesh mesh information and all those like surface meshes are stored right here. So these four files will define the computational domain as well as help us to set up the um, boundary conditions. 
So um, this is the end of using symmetric GUI. Next, we're using command line tools to actually run the simulation. So I, I actually already have a completed case right here. So I just need to copy these four files to right here. So I'll explain um, what's the purpose of each file. So also I'll provide links to all the files uh, right here uh, in the description. So, so this Python script, calculatefiber.py, actually helps us calculate the fiber distribution in the whole domain. Since we're using idealized geometry, uh, we actually have analytical expression for the fiber direction and the shape direction. So we can actually calculate two vector fields. But if it's a patient specific geometry, then you will need to using some rule-based uh, method to generate the necessary vector fields. So uh, let me first run this script. All right, so after running this script, so it will actually generate two extra files in this match folder. So one is called fiber uh, longitudinal and the other is called fiber uh, sheet. So this is along the longitudinal direction, this is along the sheet direction. We actually visualize both. And so we can open it in uh, pair view. So uh, choose orientation array using fiber direction. So now you can actually see um, the longitudinal fiber direction. We can do the same thing for the, the other fiber field, uh, vector fields. So this sheet direction is just, just pointing from uh, endosurface to the episurface. So as you can see, it requires two vector fields to actually to enable like cross product so that we can construct a local coordinate system. So the other important file here is actually the input file. Um, so let me start the simulation first, then I'll explain the input file. So SMFSI currently supports both open MPI and MPI CH. So you can invoke it through MPI EXE or MPI run. Uh, so here is an executable of the SPFSI. You can download it either from as a binary from simtk.org or you can compile it from source. We, uh, the source code is open source on GitHub. So let's hit enter. Then the whole simulation starts to run. Now you can see the convergence history right here. Everything seems normal right now. So now let's go back to look at the input file. So the input file is roughly separated into three large components. So the first part is the general simulation parameter. Basically, it specifies the number of time steps, the time step size, how you want to save the file. Uh, so the second part is uh, defining the mesh. So it defines the uh, volumetric mesh. So all the file paths right here, you need to uh, specify according to your own system where you store these files. So also the face information, the three phase we've defined. We also need to specify the fiber direction. So the longitudinal fiber direction always comes before this sheet direction. And uh, for three problems, we always require two so that we can construct at least two so that we can construct a local coordinate system. So the third part is uh, uh, equation, basically to find the physics we are solving. So we're solving a structure equation and here's the parameters for the uh, Newton solver since we're solving a nonlinear problem. Also, we are, so we are using Guccioni constitutive model right here. So here are the parameters for, for this specific model. So the active contraction of this idealized left ventricle is driven using active stress model. So we are defining it using this fiber reinforcement stress. So in the problem setup is actually a con constant value, but the value is too large to specify such value, to impose such a value at time equal zero, the simulation will diverge. So 
to, to solve this problem, we're actually using our rep function, meaning that we gradually increase uh, this active stress from zero at time equal zero to the target value at, at some time later. So this is achieved through this rem function, also this temporal value file. So we can actually open this file. It's a very simple text file. So uh, the first line, the two and a one, the two means that there are two timestamps provided below, and one means it's a linear increment. So the time equal zero, the active stress value is zero. The time equal one is uh, 60K Pascal. Uh, Pascal. So it means that the active stress will increase from uh, zero to 60K uh, in one second. Also, uh, we have some control of what kind of output you want. And uh, we also have some control over the linear solver. So then the rest are the boundary conditions so at the base, we impose a zero displacement boundary condition, basically fix it in place. So at the end of the surface, we apply actually a constant pressure load, uh, but it's just similar to the active stress. So if we just impose that number at time equals zero, the simulation will diverge. So we use the same method, a rent function to gradually increase it to the target value that we want if you open the load load file is basically the same logic as uh, fiber stress. All right, finally, we specify uh, this is a pressure load, meaning that uh, it will stay perpendicular to the deformed surface during the, the simulation. All right, so let's check. It seems everything is okay and the simulation has stopped. So, now, if you go to the demo folder, um, by default, so SV, SVFSI will store all the results in a folder called the number of processors. So this number is just how many processors you specified when you run the MPI job. So in our case, it's four. So if you open it, you will see a convergence history and uh, all the results files stored in uh, VTU. We can actually visualize those results using ParaView. can warp the surface using the yeah, displacement. Okay. So this shows the deformation, uh, the active contraction of the idealized RV. So there's a con contraction and along with the like twisting motion. Yeah, so this concludes this tutorial. Um, thank you.